This is the story of Final Fantasy XIV, Stormblood, Part 4 of 4. Now, where we left off, the heroes had just liberated Doma Castle and were on their way back to Girabanya. Let's get started. At the Ruby Bazaar, Tataru says she's already chartered passage for them back to Limsilominta, but she's going to stay in Kugane a bit longer. A few moments later at the docks, Hien and Yugiri rush to say goodbye before the heroes leave. Hien swears to send aid to Eorzea once he's settled, and he also says he's going to send Shinobi to other lands to inspire other tribes to rise up against Garlemald. He sends Yugiri with the heroes and they thank him. Hurry up, you lot! The ship's about to weigh anchor! It seems our time is at an end. Go well, my friends, and may we meet again beneath the western sky. Meanwhile, in Alamigo... Xenos is thinking about a rematch with the hero. I wonder... Will you walk into my parlor once more? and Kryle is brought forth as a prisoner. It's true what they say. You do have the eyes of a monster. A ravenous, insatiable fiend. Xenos demands a nearby soldier give his weapon to Fordola. My lord, this is... A reward given in recognition of your service. I trust it will prove more capable than its former owner. I... I swear, I'll not disappoint you, my lord. In Limsa Lominsa, the heroes are optimistic about Alamigo, but first, Lys suggests they inform the refugees in Mordona about the good news from Doma. Merlwib approaches to share the news that Kryle has been taken prisoner. They thank her and depart with haste to Giribanya. At Castrum Oriens in Giribanya, Arnvald says they were ambushed by the Skulls who took Kryl prisoner under Xenos' orders. Thancred proposes that the others talk to Roban about causing a distraction while he sneaks in to get info on Kryl. Outside of town, the hero and Lys run into Conrad, who has a lot of good news about the resistance growing while they were in the Far East. Conrad's on his way to Castrum Oriens to meet with Roban, so the heroes head back to join the meeting. Alice tells everyone the good news from the Far East. Doma, free after all these years. Pippin and Roban say that Garlemald is distracted with so many problems, and this may be their moment to strike at Alamigo. A swift advance seems best for all concerned, not least poor Mistress Kryle. Then let us waste no more time. The campaign for Alamegan liberation begins now. Roban says the first step will be to take Castellum Velodina. I name this operation Rulger's Beacon. For as Rolger once sent his star to guide our ancestors to these lands, so too shall it see us home. The hero goes to Rolger's Reach with Conrad and takes a moment to meet some of the new recruits. Reporting back to Conrad, the hero suggests Lys would make a fine leader. He agrees and they leave to join the fight. It's begun then. As some of their number are planning on luring the Garleans away from the bridge, Minago will climb its tower and fly the Alamegan flag, hoping to trick others into thinking it's been fully captured. Come then. Rolga's star shall burn bright this day. Cordola emerges from the bridge's tower to face the Warrior of Light. The bridge is ours! Alamigo! 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 Yeah! Stand your ground! It's not over yet! With no allies, Fordola flees. Teladina is fallen? Impossible! We have them on the run! Forward! No mercy! Mm. 
School's with me! The day is theirs, and so is this bastard bridge. Someone bring the snake. The heroes regroup with Roban, proud of his minor victory, but he bids them to speak with Conrad. He mentions that Minago is now journeying home, so the heroes decide to find her and make sure she's safe. Ah, you've come. Welcome, friends, to my village. My home. After some talk, she introduces an emissary from the Ananta Beast Tribe. They are split into two factions, the Kaliana, who swore fealty to the Empire, and the Vera, who side with Alamigo. The emissary says Fordola demanded a hostage from the Kaliana. Fordola. It doesn't make sense, though. The Vera are the ones working with the Resistance. Why would she threaten the Kaliana? Because she is ignorant like all Imperials. She knows not the difference between Kaliana and Vera, nor does she care to learn. The Imperials left with the Kaliana broodmother's own daughter, Anamika. Long days and nights, she looked out on the Black Bridge weeping for her child. She goes on to say they confronted the fleeing Imperials and demanded the hostage back. The Kaliana surrounded the Imperials, one of whom, whether out of fear or stupidity, cut the child down. There was naught that could be done. In desperation, the broodmother summoned the primal Sri Lakshmi and the Imperials fled. I believe we have heard enough. Inconvenient though the timing may be, if a primal has indeed been summoned, we can scarce afford to ignore it. We must needs discuss how best to resolve this situation. The heroes agree to head to the Vera village to learn more about this primal, Sri Lakshmi. An Ananta named Sarisha says that the Kalyana tribe will try to coerce the Vera tribe to pay tribute to the primal and asks the heroes to help them see reason. The heroes approach the Kalyana tribe and witness them speaking with their primal. Sri Lakshmi says she's revived the murdered girl in the flesh, but her soul remains extinguished. Now do you see her promises for what they are? Alize, have you gone mad? Alice sympathizes with the grieving mother, but warns that embracing a primal will condemn her. The primal tells them to bask in her radiance as she tries to temper them. Abide in misery then, fools. The Ananta are more deserving of my blessing. The hero faces down Sri Lakshmi at Emanation. Once again, the hero emerges victorious over a primal. You did it again. You saved them. I just wish I could have been more help. You... You slew our mistress! She was our hope! Our salvation! IS THERE NO END TO YOUR CRUELTY?! Lise tries to convince them to listen and to stop leaning on primals, but they demand the heroes leave. Girabania is our home too. And one way or another, we're going to have to learn to live together. Meanwhile, in Alamigo... Ah, the savage returns. And with her tail firmly between her legs, beaten by beastmen, I hear. Fedola Remlupis. Commander of the Cranian Lupi, reporting as ordered. Why do you tremble, sir? I'm terrified of dying having achieved naught. Gladly would I give my life to win a great victory on the battlefield, had I but the strength. You were defeated by the Resistance on several occasions. You misjudged the Ananta and spurred them into summoning an icon. Have you anything to say? I do not, my lord. My failures are my own. I am prepared to accept your judgment. And that is very admirable. However, I've had enough of this dumb show. Give voice to that hunger I see in your eyes, or I will pluck them from your head. I want to make them pay! All of them! Everyone who ever mocked or looked down on me! I want the power to make them pay! Then I shall give you a chance. A chance to transcend your mortal limits. Assuming, that is, you are prepared to wager your life for such power. I came here prepared to die. Tell me what I must do.
Back at the Vera village, Sarisha thanks the hero for dispatching the primal, but says she's concerned about the desperation in her sisters which drove them to summon it. Back in Monago's hometown, she and Conrad thank and praise the hero too. Pippin reports that they've seen no sign of Imperials returning to reclaim the bridge, and it's time to push further east. He and Conrad urge the heroes to rest first, so they stay with Monago's family and enjoy a nice meal. Later that evening, Lise talks to the hero about missing her family, being that her father and sister both died resisting the Empire. The following morning, the heroes journey eastward for Alagiri, a village recently liberated by Alliance and Resistance forces. When they arrive, Roban greets them warmly and says they're just in time for a strategy meeting. At the meeting, he says their next target is Specula Imperatoris, a tower to the east. There's a massive Imperial cannon at the nearby Castrum Albania, and Roban believes they would not want to destroy this tower. Alice and the hero will stay in defense of Alagiri, while everyone else joins the assault on the tower. Meanwhile, in an Imperial research facility, Kryle is sealed in a high-tech chamber, while Fordola lies on a table. <laughs> She lives. Impressive. Or merely lucky, though that too may prove a useful trait. My lord, what have you done to me? Though we Guardians are intellectually and physiologically superior in almost all respects, we lack the hereditary traits required for the reliable manipulation of ether, hence our unique inability to wield magics. The doctor says that in the past, they were oppressed by the lesser races and sought shelter in the freezing north of Isselbard. But in Isselbard, they discovered Cerulean, which enabled the development of Magitek. Still, he sought a way to modify the Garlean genome to enhance their race, and though the Empire forbade his research, Xenos fully supports it. You gave me this treatment, but I'm not Garlean. What you have been granted is far greater than mere magic. Before that lesser light. It is as a second son. Xenos says he has a specific duty in mind for her. Found you. Back in the peaks of Girabanya, the hero patrols the area surrounding Alagiri. At Specula Imperatoris, battle rages. Our work here is all but done. What of Conrad and his men? They are for the main tower. The Skulls have offered fierce resistance thus far. But Conrad seems to believe he can convince them to lay down their arms. Then we will tend to the stragglers down below. With me! Report. Enemy forces have overrun the lower facilities and appear to be mounting an assault on the main tower. We have already received a request for reinforcements. Tell them to stand down. Commander, if I may, our people... Your people are still in there. They will be slaughtered. Lord Zeno said no reinforcements. He would have us use the main cannon to destroy the installation. What? Kill our own soldiers? You must be mistaken. Mayhap you'd like to ask Lord Zenos yourself. Wars are won on the backs of the dead. Theirs and ours. There is no truth but this. We must remain firm and resolute, and always, always do our duty. Now, give the order. Initiate firing sequence. Specular Imperatoris, main tower. Fire when ready. Treacherous bastards! Their people were still fighting! Full retreat! Now! Relay the orders! All forces retreat! I repeat, all forces retreat! Nearby, the hero and Alice witness the tower's collapse and agree to head there immediately. At the base of the tower, Alice begins to panic when Alfino is unaccounted for, but she pulls it together and she and the hero tend to the wounded. Conrad! Conrad, speak to me! We carried the survivors to safety, but Conrad's... We have done what we can for him. All that remains is to pray. 
Is that, is that you, Lise? I can't, I can't see a damn thing. Well, that's that then. Time's up. What are you talking about? You'll be on your feet before you know it. Uh, it's all right, Lise. I've lived long enough. But listen, I want, I want you to lead the resistance in my stead. Don't say another word. You'll recover. We'll recover. We'll bring freedom to Alamigo together. We're not going to stop here. Lead them to victory. To freedom. I will, Conrad. I will. I promise. Cerulean pipeline! Impossible! How could one man? Shoot the bastard! Shoot him! <laughs> My lance has slain far greater beasts. Back at the tower, Alice is relieved to hear that Alfino is alright, and they head back to Alagiri as Alfino tends to Conrad's body. Later in Alagiri, Roban mourns the loss of Conrad. After a moment of silence, he urges the others to let this grief drive them forward. Pippin wonders aloud why the Imperials stopped firing the cannon after one blast. Lise, being inspired by victories from the Far East, says she will personally check if the cannon is operational, despite others protesting the dangers of doing so. The hero joins her, and they climb a mountain with an ancient ship at its top that was said to have saved people from the Great Flood at the end of the 5th Astral Era. At the peak, they see the damaged cannon smoking in the distance. Lee says it's time to strike, and they run back to Alagiri. Suspecting a trap, Pippin suggests they send a small force to infiltrate the castrum, aided by some of his agents. The heroes meet with Pippin's contact, Stark, near the castrum. She says a lone infiltrator destroyed the pipeline that supplies the cannon, and the engineers are scrambling to fix it. Lise wants to sneak into the castle, and Stark says she can provide maps to help. Alfino devises a plan to split into three groups that converge on the castrum and take control of the cannon. The hero enters Castrum Mabanya directly to wreak havoc and keep them distracted, with his goal being to reach the weapons research facility. As he approaches the facility, he's attacked by a monstrosity dubbed Inferno. After a good fight, the hero emerges victorious. Alfino and Alizé meet with the hero, observing Inferno's corpse. Lisa's unit should be advancing upon the fire control center in the command tower. Let us join them. Lise! Thank the Twelve, you're all right. And you. There's the control center. Let's hit them hard and fast. Ready? They're here! It was you, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I... I gave the order to fire. It was over! The Skulls had surrendered, no one else had to die, and you killed them! Your own people! Your own comrades! Fordola says she knew them and fought alongside them, and knew full well what she was doing. But everything comes at a price. And if you haven't got the means to pay, then you pay with blood. Murderer! Butcher! Traitor! like. All are welcome.
She'll be all right, but we'll need to carry her. Will you help me? A moment later, Roban congratulates them on their victory and Lys receives word that Alice is recovering. Lys is concerned that Kryle's whereabouts remain unknown, but Roban encourages her and says Pippin's men are on it. Then he says he wants to show them something. I wanted to show you this house. My house. It was damn near impossible to live off the land, barren as it was, which is why so many of us traded our plowshares for swords. The hero is suddenly struck with a vision of Roban's past. Lisa's father, Curtis, calls the villagers to action against the Mad King, then writes on the wall. Liberty or death? Liberty or death? If this be your creed, then raise up your hands, raise up your voices! Together we will tear Theodoric from the throne! Together we will reclaim our freedom! <laughs> Liberty or death, is it? Tell me, soldier, what do you think those words mean? Uh, we... we must needs be willing to die for liberty. Curtis urges Roban to always fight for liberty, or else they will trade one tyrant for another. Roban says he's willing to die to make the lives of his people a little easier. Roban asks Lise if she will swear by the same creed as her father, liberty or death. I swear to you, here and now, I will fight until the end. Be it liberty or be it death. But the freedom we win must be for every Alamegan, even ones like Fordola, though they may hate us, and the Ananta, though they may fear us. We'll fight, and we'll talk, and we'll find a way to make it work for all of us. Compared to all that, retaking our home will seem like the easy part. Hmm. A good oath. And there is naught else to say. You are indeed your father's daughter. Lys and the hero head out, but on the way they are attacked by young villagers. Stark explains that these kids have only known Imperial occupation and would rather score points with the Empire than trust the Resistance. They aren't likely to change until Alamigo itself is liberated. The heroes return to Raugr's Reach to assist with Alisae's recovery, which appears to be going well. Lys pulls the hero aside for a chat. Well, what do you think? The hero compliments her dress. It's nice of you to say so and a bit embarrassing, but mostly nice. She then asks the hero to spar with her in a special place. After the match, Alfino says Alice is being well looked after and he's ready to head to Castor Mabanya. At Castor Mabanya, Pippin says it's under control and they've already looted and distributed Imperial supplies. He also saw a prisoner being escorted to the capital that was likely Kryle. Finally, he says the Alliance has established a base at the front lines outside Alamigo, and the heroes head there to discuss next steps. Comrades, brave and true, they had come from all across Eorzea to stand with us, to stand against oppression and tyranny. Ere we begin, I would say to you as a proud son of Alamigo that I am grateful to each and every one of you for your part in this endeavor. They devise a plan to assault the castle head-on and blast a hole in the gate, but he tells the Scions to focus on rescuing Kryle. Ralga's beacon nears its end. Soon, my friends, Alamigo will be ours once more! After the meeting, Thancred approaches and confirms he has seen Kryle and knows where she's being held. Minago says she knows someone who may be able to help them get in. Whisker, the man from Alagana who apologized to Lys a while back, says he knows a way to sneak into Alamigo through the nearby lake. First, they will need to acquire a key from his grandfather. The heroes fight their way through enemy-controlled land to reach his grandfather, who's found hiding in a cellar. He comes out and gives his grandson the key while commending him for his bravery. Just as they're about to dive into the lake, Orianje makes a surprise appearance. He has been studying Fordola's enhancement and gives the heroes Moonbrita's siphon, which he believes will nullify it. They thank him and begin their swim. Emerging from the water, the heroes enter Alamigo, led by Thancred.
Armed with a siphon, the heroes confront Fordola. She's a powerhouse, but Urianje's theory proves true. Every time the hero activates the siphon, she's temporarily stunned, and the heroes defeat her. No. Not after everything. I cannot lose. I will not. Oh, but you will. Without your tricks, you're nothing. Conrad, Mefrit, your own comrades. I should kill you here and now for what you did. But there's no place for that kind of justice here. Not in my Alamigo. Oh, how very bloody noble of you. <sighs> well, you'll pardon me my sins, will you? After you and your freedom fighters come and tear down everything we've worked so hard to build. We were fighting for our people's freedom. You're slaves to a tyrant! There's no freedom in that! Meanwhile, Alfino and the hero set Kryle free. Kryle! Touching as this moment is, it will have to wait. We should rejoin the main force at once. Fordola warns of a great power Xenos holds as they leave, taking her prisoner. As Lys leaves with Fordola, the hero and Alfino find Arinvald, who has managed to secure the Aetherite at the Alamegan Quarter. A moment later, they rendezvous at the Alliance Camp. When Alfino wonders what Xenos' new power may be, Raban fears it may be Omega, since Sid still hasn't found it. Kryle explains that while prisoner there, she saw them imbuing people with experimental powers. So that's how Fordola improved so fast. I knew there had to be something. She wasn't half as strong or quick to predict my attacks when we first met. If it weren't for Oriange's siphon thingy, I really don't think we'd have beaten her. Oriange approaches, and after some discussion, Kryle concludes that these enhanced people have been granted the Echo artificially. Raban and the others agree to press on, and Raban gives the hero a package to take to Pippin. Pippin opens the package and is astonished to find that it is Raban's legendary sword, Tizona. Just then, a messenger says an imperial fleet of wolfmen is approaching. Just as Pippin is about to order an attack, Alfino has an alternative plan. He says these wolfmen came from Doma and were forced to fight for the Empire, and with Doma liberated now, he could convince them to join their side. Pippin agrees to this strategy, so the hero and Alfino rush to confront them head on. The Wolfmen approach and Alfino stops them to explain that Doma is free and Lord Hian is alive. Unfortunately, they don't believe him and they attack. The heroes defeat them, then speak with their leader, Hakuro. They listen to Alfino recount the tale of Doma's liberation in the Far East. Inspired, they agree to join the heroes and assist with the liberation of Alamigo. Alfino gives Pippin the good news about the Wolfmen, then Pippin turns his attention to the gates of Alamigo. Thaumaturges, forward! Give me Hellfire! Give me Ifrit's bloody inferno! Now give me a curse and winter! Enough ice and snow to bury a behemoth! All cannons, fire at will! Let no man say we neglected to knock! We nearly had it! Is that... Bear witness, my Eorzean brothers and sisters! Doma has come to pay her debts! Lord Hian! We will deal with the flying machines! Forward, my friends! For freedom and justice! Resume firing! We're through. The way is clear. The hero enters Alamigo, supported by the Alliance armies and the Resistance forces. They fight their way through Imperial soldiers and Magitek weapons, and at the end face Lord Xenos himself. After a lengthy battle, Xenos backs into the throne room and beckons the hero. <laughs> yes! Yes! Such ferocity! 
Such tenacity. It fills you even now, doesn't it? The hunger to bite down on my jugular. To feel the warmth fill your mouth and run over even as you drink deep. Good. Good. This is the beast I have longed to face. He leads the hero to the royal menagerie, revealing a giant prison, binding the great dragon Shinryu. Your fates are entwined, are they not, Icon Slayer? This dragon, this embodiment of unbridled despair, born of a desperate man's burning hatred for the Empire. How raw the raging tempest that churns within its breast. No myth made manifest this, but a being of pure violence. After the hero says he would slay the Icon Dragon, Zeno says from his research into the Echo, he's learned to bind them to his will. He says his grandfather, founder of the Garlean Empire, mandated that all Icons must be slain as they are a blight on the star. Ha! T'was not justice which spurred his campaign, but fear! Fear of the Icons! Fear of their power! Cowardice made them much more of the battle. We who are born into this merciless, meaningless world have but one candle of life to burn. This is who we are, my friend. This is all we are. Alamigo and Doma and Colomol be damned! At the Royal Menagerie, the hero faces Shinryu, bound by Xenos' will. The fight is spectacular, destructive, and extremely difficult, but the hero defeats the Icon. Are you alright? Xenos, bloodied and defeated, stands and expresses joy for finally feeling something. Is that what this was all about? All the meaningless death? and destruction, so you could feel something. Oh, this, this moment, let it be enshrined in eternity. My heart beating out of time, so clear, so vivid, so real, so real. Farewell, my first friend, my enemy. The Alliance leaders approach and learn of Xenos' fate. Lise feels empty, but the others give her encouragement. Stand tall, Lise. Now is the time to raise a cheer for all who fought for freedom. A cheer loud enough to carry to the highest heavens. You're right. So let's do it together. For Alamigo!
20 years of imperial rule have left Alamigo torn and bleeding. It won't be easy to heal a generation's worth of wounds, to bridge the gap. But I won't give up, Papalimo. I won't. Well, well, well. What a fine mess we've made. There. There ends your hateful legacy. Meanwhile, in Garlemald, Emperor Varus speaks to the Assian Elidibus and does not mourn for the death of his son Xenos. He didn't see him as fit to lead, and he disapproved of his use of icons. Elidibus reveals his face to the Emperor and he is shocked. Later in Ragra's Reach, Lys gathers the Scions as she has something to say. Thank you doesn't really suffice, does it? I'm grateful. Truly grateful from the bottom of my heart. She reveals to them all that, because of her responsibilities to Alamigo, she can no longer be a scion. Am I to understand that you summoned us all, some of us still nursing wounds, to hear this? Oh, I... I... I did um... <laughs> Forgive me, Lise. Twas but a jest. But this I say with the utmost sincerity. Scion or no, we are comrades, now and ever after. Come what may, you may count on us in your hour of need. We shall never refuse you. Stola. Oh, gods. I swore I wouldn't cry. Come back here, you slippery little devil. How you test me with this wretched soul. Elsewhere, in Girabanya, Sid finds a pit where he believes Ultima lies dormant. Like clockwork, Nero Tolskeva arrives to help. And that concludes the story of Stormblood. If you want to see what happens next, check out the video for patch 4.1. See you next time. <laughs>